everybody, welcome back to my channel. I've got a ticket on a Boeing 757-300 and you're coming along with me. Well, if you watch my channel, you know that I recently flew on a 757-300 to Kona. That was a long flight. Tonight's flight is actually quite a short flight, Atlanta to Orlando. That's not my 757, but I like the view from up here. The 757-200 we're looking at here has a capacity of 199 seats. The aircraft we'll be flying on tonight, the 300 series, has 234 seats. Why such a large airplane? The only thing I can think of is that the load factor has got to be pretty high tonight because that's a large aircraft for such a short route. Here's my 757-300 for tonight's short flight. It was delivered to Northwest Airlines in 2002 and was named the Bernie Eppel after an employee of Northwest Airlines. Then, in 2009, the aircraft was painted in Delta's colors as part of the merger between Northwest and Delta. Tonight, our flight has a call sign of Delta 1658. So come with me as I board the 757-300 series. This is a long, narrow-body aircraft. The flying pencil, as some call it. All right, unlike my experience the first time I flew on the 757-300, this time I'm in the back. My cabin seat is typical for main cabin of Delta Airlines. Fresh and new looking, and I've got a seat back entertainment screen in front of me. First step, of course, is open up the large window. So this is quite a difference from my last 757-300 experience, but I've got a window, so I'm happy. 330 is our cruising altitude today, and we'll be flying the Grinch 3 arrival. The Grinch 3 arrival, interesting. The arrival procedures to the Orlando International Airport are named after Disney characters and characters that appeal to children. After all, we're headed to the number one children's destination in the world, Orlando. Other arrival procedures have names like Goofy 7, Mini 5, and Shrek 2. As you can tell by the name of this video, this video will focus very heavily on the arrival. But we can't leave until a small issue is addressed. We had to have one engine started at the gate due to an inoperative APU, but that only added a few more minutes to our departure time. Shortly after that, the ground crew went into position to prepare us for pushback. On this full flight, hardly anyone was looking out the window, but for me, it's all about what you can see out there, so I'm happy with my seat on the left side of the airplane today. With the ramp behind us clear, we began our pushback under the control of the ramp controller. We're leaving the busiest airport in the world and we're headed to another airport with a lot of traffic too. Once the tug was removed, we taxied under our own power. Today's departure runway will be runway 26 left. To get there, we leave the ramp to the north, then taxi towards the east to reach the beginning of the runway, which heads in a westerly direction. We complete the taxi under the control of Atlanta Ground Control, and we're handed off to the local tower controller for clearance for takeoff on the 9,999 foot long runway. Let's head on over to Orlando International. We're picking up speed as our two Pratt & Whitney 2043 engines work hard to help us become airborne. I'll let you listen in to some 757 power from behind the engines. As we lift off, we get a great view of the terminal area at ATL. Although not planned for this flight, we're also going to get a very similar view of the terminal area at Orlando once we get there. 
Stay tuned to see what happens. Today, we're flying the Smelts 3 RNAV departure procedure, designed for aircraft that take off on any runway that heads west. Orlando is to the south of us, so as part of this procedure, we'll follow waypoints in a series of left-hand turns to get to our final waypoint, Smelts, on this procedure, before we proceed on course and head towards the Grinch 3 arrival to Orlando International. As we turn to the left, I can't help but look back at the airport we just departed from. The airport is recognizable by lights that illuminate the multiple concourses. After turning to the left, we turn towards the right towards Orlando as we climb to 33,000 feet. En route, I identified a few cities by their lights. Below is Barnesville, a town once known as the buggy capital of the south. Barnesville was followed by the much larger Macon, located at the center of the state of Georgia and often referred to as the heart of Georgia. Okay, I'm going to fast forward this video to our approach, and for this I'll be providing actual air traffic control transmissions. This channel is heavily focused on air traffic situational awareness, so I want to have you listen in first to another aircraft that contacted the approach controller. We're coming in from the north, and approaching this airport from the south is Spirit Airlines, flight number 1900 from Aguadilla. Let's listen to this flight call approach control. Evening approach, Spirit Wings 1900, uh, landing flight level 230, descending via the rise, landing south. Springs 1900, Orlando Post, expect the vision approach, 17 left. 17 left, like to request the RNF vision 18 right if you got it. Uh, I'll let you know as you get a little bit closer, last little push tonight. Thanks. The controller advises the aircraft that he'll be landing on runway 17 left, but the pilot requests runway 18 right, and a few moments later, our pilot calls approach control and is told to expect runway 18 right, the same runway Spirit desires. Delta 1658 to the south. Shortly thereafter, although being still pretty far out, we were cleared for the approach to runway 18 right. Delta 1658, 30 miles from Yago, descend via the arrival at Yago, clear to Alice 18 right. Alright, uh, clear to descend via at Yago, clear to the ILS. To, uh, you said 1-8 right, correct, Delta, Paper. Despite there being a lot of traffic coming into the airport, the controller has noted that down the line, around the time that Spirit Airlines flight number 1900 will land, runway 18 right, the Spirit pilot's desired runway, will have less traffic, and the controller grants the pilot permission to use runway 18 right. The same runway will land on. Springs 1900, change your runway, expect the RNF visual 18 right, expect it from ears. RNF visual 18 right from ears, Spirit Airlines 1900. Spare 1900 to center maintain 3000. maintain 3000, Spare Wings 1900. Looking ahead, it appears that the controller will be able to get Spirit 1900 in ahead of us, so he tells us to reduce our speed. So the 1658, reduce speed to 210 now. Please now, Delta 1658. Since our landing runway is to the south and we're coming in from the north, we'll basically be coming straight in. Spirit 1900, however, is coming in from Puerto Rico, which means that this aircraft will be approaching the Orlando area from the south. To get to the runway, Spirit will have to pass by the airport to the east, then make a left turn to the west, then head south to the runway. And the controller plans to do this for Spirit before we land tonight. Now the controller is going to give Spirit a heading adjustment still to the north. Springs 1900, turn 10 degrees left. 10 left, Spirit Wings 1900. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to provide you with uninterrupted real-time air traffic control as we approach the airport. There's no surprise in what's going to happen soon based on the title of this video, and I've been focusing on the relationship between Spirit 1900 and us. But to allow for even more situational awareness, I'm going to let you listen into all transmissions to all pilots on the frequency just as if we're in the flight deck. The approach controller will now tell Spirit to descend and turn to the left, and then talk to an exec jet on the frequency. Let's listen into. Orlando Approach Control. Springs 1900, descend and maintain 2500, flight heading 310. Descend and maintain 2500, heading 310, spread wings 1900. 5550, flighting 070, descend and maintain 6000. We're still following the published route towards the runway's approach, but Spirit is now heading northwest and it's turned back towards the airport. The controller is now going to issue us some more speed restrictions to allow Spirit to be squeezed in ahead of us. 
So the 1658 maintain 210 knots, so honor, and then 180 knots are greater to Tuffy. All right, 210 to honor, and then uh, you said 180 to Tuffy, Delta 1658. Spring 1900, airport's off your left at 8 miles. The controller is pointing out the airport to Spirit without issuing any further turns. Airport's inside, Spirit Wings 1900. Spray 1900 at your discretion, left direct ears, cross ears at 2500, clear to RNA visual, one air approach. All right, our discretion, left direct ears, ears 2500, clear for the uh, RNA visual, one one eight left, one eight right approach, Spray Wings 1900. Spray 1900, connect tower 124.3. Tower 243, Spray Wings 1900. Well, that was pretty quick. The controller cleared the Spirit aircraft for the approach to the runway and handed them off to the control tower. Budget 550, reduce speed to 210, then descend and maintain 4000. While we make a procedural turn, the controller talks to the exec jet on the frequency. Spirit is making their left turn at their discretion in front of us. That turn the Spirit makes is accomplished when the pilot decides to do it, and we're next to land after this airplane. In the meantime, behind us, Southwest checks in with approach control. So it's 1582. One six thousand percent of via the uh, Grinch three with Google. Uh, 1582, Lando, expect the LS 20 right. 20 right, so it's 1582. The aircraft that are behind us really have no factor when it comes to our approach. This includes JetBlue, who's also behind us. Jet 969, could our C lot descend and maintain 4000? C lot 4000, Jet 969. With Spirit Airlines already on the tower frequency and already out of control by the approach controller, we're the next aircraft to land on this frequency. All other aircraft are behind us and have no effect on us at all. And remember that we were clear for the approach a while back. All we have to do is keep on heading towards the airport and everything should essentially be fine. But we do have to keep in mind that Spirit is still in the air and making a pilot's discretion turn to fit in front of us. In the meantime, the controller is going to talk to the exec jet, which is flying directly behind us. This aircraft needs to reduce its speed. 550, reduce speed to 180. After all, the exec jet is following a 757-300. We're a larger type aircraft and can produce significant wake turbulence, especially for a smaller aircraft like a business jet behind us. The approach controller has issued speed restrictions to many aircraft this evening, ensuring that everyone is well separated. Looking ahead of us, he sees that Spirit is flying slower than us, so we're issued a new speed restriction. So the 1658, maintain 170, they're not still tough. 170 to Tuffy, Delta 1658. The controller is doing the best he can to ensure adequate separation between us and the Spirit Airlines aircraft up ahead. Most of the aircraft that are coming in for the north are simply following the procedure, so it's very important for the controller to monitor the speed of the aircraft. In the meantime, Southwest Airlines, which is pretty far behind us, is being cleared for the approach. Southwest 1582, 35 miles from Yago, descend via the arrival at Yago, cleared off, morning, right? All right, send via the arrival at Yago, cleared for the uh, ILS 20 right, so let's hit the A2. Next up, the executive jet is being advised that he's following a Boeing 757. That's the aircraft that we are on right now. We can produce a rough ride for the aircraft behind us. 5550, you're following a Boeing 757, 12 o'clock, 6 miles southbound, descending out of 3000. Sorry I'm missing the voice of the exec jet pilot, but he does see us. 5550, follow the traffic, all should turbulence, let's go visit for 20 right. The exec jet is clear for the approach after being advised about wake turbulence from us. We were clear for the approach a while ago and were all set up and now asked to switch to the airport control tower frequency. Delta 1658, connect tower 124.3. Over to tower, Delta 1658, good night. Let's check in with the control tower, which is physically located at the Orlando International Airport. The control tower will provide landing clearance for us. Evening tower, Delta 1658, 18 right. So, we are clear to land on runway 18 right. We know that Spirit is in front of us, but the tower controller doesn't mention it. The spacing is adequate at this time for Spirit to land, and then we can land, so we're given landing clearance right away. Everything is perfectly normal for this approach. The only thing that I'll point out is that if Spirit was not fit in front of us, we would have been number one on the approach probably 20 miles out, but Spirit came in from the south and specifically requested to land on the runway that we're about to land on. We're only a few miles behind Spirit at this point. It is a nice night in Orlando, and the tower controller is using her radar to identify us by call sign, but also has a great view of us and the Spirit aircraft on approach to runway 18 right. Like I said, Spirit was squeezed in in front of us, and the approach controller gave the pilot some discretion when making the left turn inbound to the runway, so the exact separation is not completely precise, but it's sufficient enough so that we aren't too close to Spirit while in the air. If we were too close in the air, we'd have to take some action, like slowing down further or making S-turns. Keep in mind that this approach is occurring after midnight, so traffic was rather light. 
There was actually quite a bit of room in the airspace for sufficient separation of aircraft. Orlando is indeed a busy airport, but things slow down in the overnight hours quite considerably. I kept that in mind during the approach, thinking we'd be on the ground soon. I was wrong. But in the meantime, I just enjoyed the scenery and the lights of the neighborhoods just north of the airport. The towns we flew over between Atlanta and here were a lot smaller. Behind us, the executive jet was also asked to check into the airport's control tower. The flight is also clear to land right away and advised to use caution for the wake turbulence from our large aircraft. Orlando Tower, exit at 550 with you. Exit at 550, Orlando Tower, caution wake turbulence from channel of a Boeing 757, three and a half mile final. Wind 1004, runway 1 right, clear to land. 1-8 right, clear to land, number 2, exit at 550. We're on a three and a half mile final, and at this point, Spirit is landing on runway 1-8 right. Runway 1-8 right is 12,000 feet long. That is plenty of runway for Spirit to slow down and get off the runway. However, the runway doesn't have many turnoffs near the end. There's essentially two turnoffs near the middle of the runway, then nothing until the very end of the runway. This means that if the pilot misses the last turnoff, he'll have to go all the way down the runway to turn off at the very end. Well... That's exactly what's going to happen right now. Nineteen hundred. Um, no delays to the end. I've got traffic. Uh, two mile final. Left turn Bravo ten. Hold short on my one eight left with me. No delay. She told Spirit that we're on a two mile final and uses the words "no delay" when telling the Spirit pilot to turn left at the end, which is also known as Taxiway Bravo ten. The pilot acknowledges this and continues the landing roll down the runway with the intention of vacating the runway at the end, but Spirit is just not moving fast enough. He's still on the runway, and our 757 is getting closer and closer, so the controller has no option than to tell us to go around and climb. Our approach is aborted with this command. Delta 1658, go around, climb, and maintain 2005 runway heading. All right, uh, go around 2000 and runway heading, Delta 1658. We're climbing runway heading to 2,000 feet, and we'll now get a great view of the terminal area as the controller tells Spirit to cross the parallel runway and assigns us a higher altitude. By this point, Spirit is now clearing runway 18 right. Spirit 1900, cross runway 18 left at taxiway Bravo 10, take it. Spirit wings 1900, roger, join taxiway Bravo Echo Echo 1, good night. Delta 1658, climb and maintain 3000, turn right heading 205. 3000, right turn 205, Delta 1658. Here we've got a view of terminals A and B and its four satellite gate complexes as we climb to 3000 feet and fly heading 205. Delta 1658, contact departure 124.8. 248, Delta 1658. Looking down, we can actually see the Spirit Airlines airplane that's now well clear of the runway 18 right. If we were just a little bit further behind Spirit, or if Spirit cleared the runway sooner, we would have been on the ground already. But that wasn't the case, and safety is of utmost importance in aviation, so we had to go around. Let's check in with the Tracon controller again. Park Delta 1658, 24 for a 3. Delta 1658, on your departure, ready contact, fly heading 300. 300, Delta 1658. Delta 1658, climb the visual approach 18 right. What was that? Delta 1658, climb the visual approach 18 right. 18 right, Delta 1658. Recognize the controller's voice? We're back on his frequency again, and he's having us fly a northwest heading and lets us know we'll be coming back into the same runway visually. Land approach at Egypt, 1451, 200 descending, sir, for a 14,000 information, Zulu. Yeah, but 1451, Orlando, expect the ILS 17 left. All right, ILS 17 left of the 1451, thanks. As you can hear, the controller is still working other aircraft behind us that are also getting ready to land in Orlando. Delta 1658, turning 360. 360, Delta 1658. We've just been told to turn to the north. Southwest 2730, we're at a 15,000, send me the arrival of Zulu. Southwest 2730, Orlando, expect the ILS point, right? As the controller talks to other aircraft on the frequency, we continue our turn to north. We're being placed on a downwind leg. We're going to be flying in the opposite direction of landing, then make a right turn back to land. Southwest 1582, maintain 180 knots, we're ready to selfie. 180 knots, we're ready to selfie, Southwest 1582. Welcome to an unexpected tour of the Orlando area. 
This go-around is going to add an additional 10 minutes to our flight this evening. We're actually already a bit late to begin with, since we had to start one of our engines at the gate in Atlanta. That caused the delay in pushing back. For now, we're just going to continue north on this right downwind leg. ATC is actually very quiet at the moment, as there are very few aircraft landing at this time. That's why we don't hear anything on the radio. Well, at least I get to see more of Orlando from this side of the airplane. The view coming straight in from the north did not provide a good overview of the Orlando area, so I'm happy I can see a lot more now. What about all those passengers on the airplane? Aren't they wondering what happened? We were so close to the ground when we pulled up. Well, the captain came on the PA system to let everyone know what happened. Hey, folks, for the flight deck. Reason for the go around, we had an aircraft on the runway uh, coming up on uh, short final there, so we went around. We're boxing it back around. We'll have you on the ground in about five minutes. We appreciate your patience and uh, welcome to Orlando. Welcome to Orlando, he said. That's an announcement usually made by the flight attendants once we're on the ground. I love how the pilot used aviation terminology like go around and short final. I'm guessing most of the passengers understood him. The flight deck crew doesn't have a ton of time at this point to make a really detailed announcement. The plane essentially went from a landing configuration to a climb configuration and is going back to a landing configuration again. The Orlando airport is off of our right side and we're going past it before we can turn back around to land. It shouldn't be much longer on this heading. Approach control is now going to talk to a southwest flight that's in front of us. We'll be following this aircraft. The controller will also talk to another southwest flight that's much further out. Let's listen in. Southwest 1582, connect tower 124.3. 243, Southwest 1582, good night. South 2730, 30 miles from Iago, descend via the arrival at Iago, cleared ILS 20 right. Iago cleared ILS 20 right, Southwest 2730. There's a bit of a push of arrivals behind us, and the approach controller is now going to clear another aircraft, a JetBlue flight, for the approach. Table 1451, you're uh, 3, 5 miles from Banya. Descend via the arrival at Banya, cleared ILS 17 left. All right, uh, descend via uh, and at Banya, we're cleared for the ILS uh, 17 left, JetBlue uh, 1451. It's just a little bit longer on this heading before we're issued a right-hand turn to start the right base leg to the runway. There's that southwest aircraft that's on final approach to the runway, and we definitely don't want to get too close to this aircraft because we don't want to go around again. Now, we're going to be issued that right-hand turn. Southwest 1658, turn running 090, radio speed of 170. Right turn 090, speed 170, Delta 1658. This is a very wide right turn, 90 degrees to the right to a 90 degree heading. We were also told to reduce our speed. Again, it is very important that we keep a safe and long distance between us and that southwest aircraft ahead because we do not want to go around. Remember, that runway has a high speed turnoff that is very, very close to the middle of the runway. Otherwise, aircraft will have to vacate at the very end. And if that aircraft spends too much time on the runway, we'll be going around again. Don't worry, we actually did make it in on the second time. The controller is now going to assign us a lower altitude and point out the airport to us. Delta 1658, descend and maintain 2200, airport 2 o'clock and 8 miles. 2200, we're looking, Delta 1658. The airport is in our 2 o'clock position and 8 miles away. Unlike our previous approach, for this approach, we'll be flying a visual approach, which means that we'll be looking out the window to see the runway. It can be difficult to spot the runway due to all of the lights, especially in a metropolitan area like this, but eventually our flight deck crew saw the airport and advised the controller that the airport was visible from the aircraft. Still inside, Delta 1658. Delta 1658, turn running 150, coverage for 20, right? 150 cleared visual, 18 right, Delta 1658. We're clear for the approach, so it's time to get handed off to the tower. Delta 1658, connect tower 124.3. 243, Delta 1658. As we switch our radio frequencies to the tower and call the tower, you're going to recognize that voice again. Tower, Delta 1658, we're back, 18 right. Delta 1658, Orlando Tower, let's try this again. Wind 120 at 5, number 2, following traffic, 3 mile final, runway 18 right, clear to land. Right, right, clear to land, Delta 1658. We're back, and let's try this again. Good word choice by both the pilot as well as the air traffic controller. The aircraft in front of us is on a 3 mile final, and we're much further out than that, so I think that our landing is going to be assured this time around. And just to make sure we are clear to land, the pilot double checks with the tower. And just to confirm for Delta 1658, clear to land, 18 right. Delta 1658, affirmative, wind 1305, runway 18 right, clear to land. 
Clear right, right, clearly, and about 1658. As we approach runway 18 right, there's another aircraft, a Spirit Airlines aircraft, approaching a parallel runway on the other side of the airport. Tower Spirit, wings 1908. Spirit, 1908, Orlando, time, wind 1304, runway 17 left, clear to land. 17 left, clear to land, Spirit, wings 1908. That Spirit Airlines aircraft is going to be landing on runway 17 left. You'll recall that at the beginning of this video, the Spirit Airlines aircraft that caused us to go around was originally assigned runway 17 left. That pilot wanted to land on runway 18 right, which is the runway that we're landing on. The air traffic controller granted him permission to land on that runway. Because the aircraft did not clear the runway in time, we were forced to go around. But if the aircraft had landed on runway 17 left, like the current Spirit Airlines aircraft is doing, we would have made it the first time in. That Spirit aircraft wants to verify he's clear to land now. That tower Spirit 1908, just uh, verify we are clear to land. Spirit 1908, affirmative number one, runway 17 left, clear to land, wind 1305. I do. Are you not catching my transmission? Yeah, I can hear you. You asked if uh, you were clear to land, and I said yes. And you didn't acknowledge, so I'm making sure that you heard me. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I responded. I have to check out my mic on my uh, headset. Perhaps it's intermittent or something. Yeah, you might want to do that. Thank you. West 1582, cross runway 18 left, attack to a Yankee. Join Charlie Juliet to the ramp tonight. Well, that was an interesting conversation between Spirit and the tower controller. That was followed by a transmission to the southwest flight in front of us to clear the runway. That is reassuring, since we still have a few miles to go before we touch down. The view is going to be exactly the same as it was the first time around, but in the end, we're met with victory. Let's land. As we slow down, we're told to turn left on taxiway Echo, which is the last high-speed taxiway before the end. If that Spirit Airlines flight that caused us to go around had cleared the runway on taxiway Echo, we would not have had to go around in the first place. The controller also provides us with instructions on which taxiways to take to get to the gate. Delta 1658, left turn taxiway Echo, cross runway 18 left, Echo, Echo 5, or Echo Golf, your choice. Have a great night. Well, welcome to the MCO Airport. Thanks so much for watching this video, everybody. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I invite you to click on the subscribe button below. Hit the bell button and be advised that I will be posting another video like this very, very soon. Thanks, everybody, and have a great night.